Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Swap coming at you with the Wiki Comic Roundup. We're in the latter half of the roundup now, so let's get started. Kicking things off, we've got Amazing Spider-Man number seven. So where we had left off, um, Peter had uh, Spider-Man had been used by Tombstone to uh, take down the Rose. And in the last issue, uh, which was the legacy, legacy number 900, <clears throat> Peter dealt with Peter uh, dealt with the living computer and was actually somewhat saved by the Sinister Six. Speaking of the Sinister Six, we begin in Brownsville, Brooklyn, with uh, Starling, Miles Morales' girlfriend, visiting her grandfather. Adrian Toomes, the Vulture. And, um, apparently she was told that, um, the Vulture has killed people. And she looked it up and, yeah, he has. And uh, she tells him he's not. Gonna, she's not gonna turn him in, but she's not gonna talk to him again either. Then, and as she's leaving, she tells him that. Uh, she, she prayed that uh, he was li uh, he was lying about Vulture kill having killed people. Then, with that, he was uh, the Spider Man got to her. The Spider Man talked to her, and so he says that today's the day. He's gonna cut Spider Man's head off. So we're now catching up with with Peter. He's uh, gone to meet with uh, Norman Osborn at the new Oscorp building. Apparently, they're uh, working on, among other things, working on you, starting using his uh, Norman's background in unique aerodynamics as a starting point. But. Uh, While there, Peter runs into Mary Jane. Uh, they talk a bit. He, apolo he he apologizes and you know learns that she's uh, working on. That she's doing PR for the uh, crack on drugs. When uh, Paul shows up, apparently we get a uh, brief flashback. Apparently they got a, Peter and Paul got into a fight in front of Mary Jane. But Paul invites Peter to dinner sometime. And, but, uh, yeah. MJ got the word, yeah, the, the Krakow and drugs are legit, so. But, uh, Peter storms into Osborne's office and says, you know, thinking maybe that MJ being there at the same time was uh, what was a scheme of Osborne's, but it wasn't. And uh, Peter tells, him, tells Osborne, however, that he wants Osborne out of his life. You know, not, he doesn't want Osborne bothering him. But... Uh, He says that yeah, he was desperate and needed Norman's help, but he got, he's not any he doesn't need it anymore. Apparently, Osborne built a uh, worked on a new spider suit for Peter. 
But as, as Peter leaves, Norman says that he never said that uh, Peter needed his. Norman says that he never said Peter needed his help. Uh, elsewhere, Vulture's watching for Spider Man and finds him, sees him swinging around and uh, goes after him. Flying him up high and then dropping him. And Vulture just seriously messes him up, smashes up his web shooters, and uh, drops and then drops him again after the web shooters are broken. And that is where the issue ends. The Spider-Man falling seemingly to his death. Good issue. Um, I have to admit, Norman not being evil is weird. Like, really weird. That brings us, but moving on to our next book, we've got Venom Lethal Protector, number five. Wrapping up the uh, Venom flashback miniseries, where we left off here, Venom learned that uh, longtime I Iron Man foe Justin Hammer was responsible for putting a, a rather large bounty on his head, and was planning to go to uh, Hammer's Island Retreat to, take, to, well, wrap things up. So, the issue is going to go back and forth but, uh, between, early, between the present and earlier points. Uh, we open with, with them arriving, um, dealing with the Hammer's uh, guards. About an hour previously in the jungle, he, deal with, he was dealing with more of Hammer's uh, arm guards when uh, local revolutionaries found him uh, explained that you know they tried get, they, they tried to go after Hammer but it, it you know they just are the, they just are the manpower for it but uh, Hammer makes his or Venom makes his way to Hammer's office about 45 minutes previously <clears throat> Um, Venom makes it to uh, the gates of Hammer's estate, where, behind which are waiting Hammer's supervillain army, led by Taskmaster. The group refer to themselves as Hammer's Hammers. But uh, Venom gets out of the... Uh, in the present, Venom gets out of the uh, trap that he, uh, he's been dropped into by Hammer. We also see more of him, uh, of Venom dealing with the various, uh, with Hammer's various hammers. Taskmaster decides that uh, discretion is definitely the better part of Valor and makes a break for it, stealing uh, Hammer's boat. <clears throat> but uh, Hammer explains that uh, he was hired by a guard or by the parent of one of the guards, that, or of, of a, perhaps not a guard, but a, uh, one of, one of the very, one of the people that was collateral damage for, uh, for when uh, Venom escaped the vault. In, I guess it's Amazing Spider-Man 375. But, um, And he decided to take ten percent of the uh, of the amount he was paid to take care of Venom to put out a bounty. But uh, Venom's able to, uh, since uh, as uh, Hammer has erected a uh, series of flame jets around Venom, Venom does manage to get through pass through the flames enough to be able to turn the remote off, which is. That activated from a cell phone. However, it was attached to a dead man switch, which uh, sets off the explosives in the house. And so, but Venom manages to escape before the house goes up and uh, sees a cruise ship in the distance and seemingly goes to uh, 
so away aboard it. And that is where the series ends. This is a fun little book. Um, I, it was kind of nice to, you know, see, I guess, how Venom used to be compared to how he is now. Um, it was, uh, I, I read Venom older I, I I had read some of the earlier Venom appearances so I still kind of remember how the how those largely went but it was and I, I actually pref I, I like Venom as he is now but it, it's still nice to see you know occasionally how he like I said how he used to be moving on to our next book we've got Star Wars Bounty Hunters number 26 where we left off Tonga and Losha's uh crew of bounty hunters had attacked uh, the Vermilion, the flagship of uh, Crimson Dawn, in an effort to rescue Cadelia. Of course, the intel that they got was provided by Dengar, who intended to basically have both groups kill each other. Um, so, they're making their way Bounty Hunters making their way through. Um, meanwhile, aboard, back aboard Edgehawk, Vakora of Clan Unbroken has uh, of the Unbroken Clan has gotten loose, but a Nexu has been unleashed on her, and uh, sadly, Vakora feels the need to kill the Nexu. Back on uh, on uh, the Rhyliel Imperial base on Corita, um, Valance, one of Valance's handlers is reading the mission report of the uh, the bombing uh, of the, the rebel base that Cadelia was being was being kept at. But uh, Lieutenant makes a pass at balance when he arrives, but uh, he turns it down. She meet. I think she intends to tell him what's happened, but doesn't. Back on the Vermilion, Margot leads. Uh, oops. Leads Tonga deeper into the Vermilion, while uh, Dengar watches, noting the escape of Korra, as well as the arrival of uh, Zuckus. But Dengar is attacked by Tasu Leech, who we see ever living hell out of Dengar. But uh, Tonga is brought to Cadelia. Apparently, Cadelia doesn't want to leave. She's feeling that uh, people either want to save her or use her. However, Tonga and Cadelia aren't alone. The Knights of Ren and Lady Kira are there. Lady Kira is impressed. And. She talks to Tonga. What explains the, the importance of Cadelia, and uh, of course, Vakora arrives and hears all, all of it, and they're heartbroken that uh, once again she was lied to. But. Uh, Kira invites uh, Tonga and her crew to work for Crimson Dawn, giving her a uh, rather large sum of credits. Back on the ship, Tonga comfort. The re Tonga and the rest of the crew are uh, mourning the loss of the uh, of the next and the fact that they didn't get the girl, so therefore they don't get the bounty. 
though it doesn't seem as though Tonga has, let, has informed them of the deal that uh, she's potentially she's considering on behalf from uh, Crimson Dawn. And that is where the issue ends. The story is definitely getting interesting. Um, bit of a misnomer cover wise. I kind of expected another fight scene with Lady Kira, but I'm not surprised there wasn't one. I'm not that surprised there wasn't one. But anyway, moving on to our next book, we've got Ghost Rider Vengeance Forever. Celebrating the 50th anniversary of Ghost Rider. Um, so we've got a framing story and then some short, uh, some shorter uh, stories throughout. The framing, the framing story has uh, Johnny Blaze pulling up to a uh, tattoo parlor in the middle of nowhere, and uh, the artist he's he's seeking is. Necro the Tattooist. A seer, a blind seer, who simply brings the tattoo, brings ink to the surface, talking about the various uh, ghost writers through, throughout the ages. We get a late 18th. Man by the name of Jimmy Underhill is uh, to be hung for sleeping with the local sheriff's wife. But he, he says that he'll do anything that he just allowed to live. The tree, when Jimmy says this, says that you say anything. And of course, the tree is uh, possessed by Mephisto. But uh, Jimmy's able to get loose and becomes an Old West ghost rider. <clears throat> um, among the tattoos that Necro puts on uh, Blaze's body are knuckle tats that say Blaze across there and Catch. We get a flashback to the Spirit of Vengeance days. Danny shows up to uh, the Hellra Hellraiser Hideaway, looking for looking for Johnny. Um, his yeah, of course he's asking to lead to uh, some of the patrons uh, making attempts on him or make, go, taking a go at him, but uh, turns out the, the Hideaway is run by none other than Blackout. Catch or Danny drags Kit drags him out, and eventually does find out what uh, or where Johnny was. And then we get another source of spirits of vengeance from the Midnight Suns days. A train full of uh, of uh, kidnapped people, basically being you know. Food for Dracula, assaulting the uh, the train are Blade, Morbius, and Vengeance. Then uh, we get a sort a Robbie Reyes story, where uh, he rescues some people from uh, Scarecrow, and finally. We get a 2099 story. The vid feed starts pops up of Zadikel saying, I'm Zadikel, you're Zadikel. We're all Zadikel. And uh, Zero Cochran, the ghost of 2099, is able to trace is able to trace the signal and go and stop Zadikel. After uh, Getting his tattoo after leave, after getting his tattoos done, Johnny leaves the uh, parlor, looks up in the sky, sees a shooting star. A shooting star that is in fact the cosmic ghost rider. But uh, Johnny gets on his bike, flames up, and rides on. And that is where the issue ends.
50 years of Ghost Rider. Whew. I love that they managed this one way or another fit pretty much every every member of the Ghost Rider Legacy into the uh, in there, even uh, introduce a couple, of, even introduce a new one. Moving on to our next book, and in fact, I believe our final Marvel book of the week, we've got Punisher number five. Where we left off, it seems as though the Punisher had uh, was about was about to lead an assault on Ares, but after having been informed that the High Priestess had uh, murdered the families of a handful of the ninjas. In front of them, no less. Punisher, seemingly lost, went went to uh, seemingly slaughter everyone, and then went and found his wife, and with the intention of them leaving. So what happened was uh, he killed the he attacked the high priestess, who turned out to be some kind of eldritch horror. None of the ninjas stand against him, but uh, Frank gets Maria out, and uh, they they leave the citadel. But Maria's condition, Maria's not feeling too well. Too, they leave the citadel. And after a while, they head back. Our flashback to Frank's past is in high school. Um, he pretty much had just one friend, a, man by name, a kid by the name of Stedman Sternberger, Sternberger, studious, sweet natured child who never thrown a punch and had no intention of learning how. So, but he's a nerd. So, Frank's hanging out in the uh, boys' room. He's a saves him from getting a swirly but uh, apparently things are things aren't exactly going great for uh, Frank he's I mean, he drinks throughout the throughout the school day and uh, Stedman suggests something join the hockey team hockey works for him and one day during a game, he gets slammed against the, the, the windows and sees a young girl on the other side. Maria. Maria starts coming to all of uh, their, all of Frank's games. Stedman no, notices this and uh, for right, writes love letters to her for signing them as Frank. Maria and Frank get together, but uh, apparently for Stedman died shortly thereafter. Car, a car crash uh, while they were, were well, there were beer cans all over the scene. It didn't seem as though he uh, he he hadn't been drinking, but he bled out over the course of four hours. But uh, Frank makes Frank calls Maria. Apparently, some kids from uh, Frank's school that had gone missing were found earlier that night, beaten to death. It made clear that Frank's the one who did it. But uh, they both have things they need to tell the other. Frank telling Maria that he's joined the Marines. Maria telling Frank that uh, she's pregnant. But Frank returns to the Citadel, and the High Priestess is there in her human form. Uh, Maria is uh, to be healed. But uh, Frank said he obviously to go after Ares on his own. And then he says that uh, he tells the high priest that if Maria is dead when he returns, he'll burn the entire citadel to the ground. As she's as she's been prepared for 
the uh, rituals that will heal her. Maria weakly asks, uh, says that she'd been, uh, she thought about the letters that Frank sent her, wrote her, and wonders if he, he really wrote them. But uh, Frank's chopper crap is shot down by Ares people, and uh, but of course Frank survived and uh, blasts his way through Ares' forces. Ares uh, says that he uh, he will redeem the Punisher. And on his uh, vest, the, the the armor he wear he, he wears on he's got he is a spray painted Punisher skull. It's yeah, it's the classic Punisher logo, and that is where the issue ends. This book definitely gets more more and more interesting as it goes on. Um, Frank going one on one against uh, Ares. That's uh, oof, that. Don't get me wrong. I, I like the Punisher, but uh, <laughs> there's a point, you know. There's a point where it's like, no, they, no way, Frank's gonna survive that. It, it's, you know, the literal god of war. But anyway, moving on to our last one for the moment, we've got deceased, War of the Undead Gods, number one. So where we left off in Deceased, um, humanity had moved to another Earth, and things seemed to be working out. There was a digital first series, which I didn't, uh, which I, is available in trade, but I sadly have not picked up yet. Um, I intend to pick up the trade soon and kind of go over what, what's been, uh, what else happened in the Deceased saga. So we begin with the, the destruction of Krypton, and, but this time from... Uh, the perspective of Kara zor -El. Um, so Brainiac is for Krypton, but, um, Kara is sent off into space. Apparently, uh, she was not sent to Earth, like, like Kal-El was. She was sent to New Genesis. Having just arrived, and it turns out that, uh, The anti-life, uh, the, the the population of Genesis is seemingly all anti-life zombies, and they attack Kara and seemingly turn her. There's a brief uh, flashback of what's happened over the last few, but uh, they've got a cure now. Um, Ollie's been cured. He was bitten near the end of uh, the last series. Blue Beetle's been cured. Uh, Hippolyta asks where Diana is, but there's still there's one person that's going to take a little bit of work to cure. So Superman and Wonder Woman are headed to uh, to pull super, to pull Kal Superman Kal El out of Earth's sun in the hopes of curing him. Batman Damian wants to go with, but. Um, But he understands, he just tells him, be safe, and if anything goes wrong, he will find a way to withstand the heat of the star and come out for both of them. Which Cassie believes because, well, he's Batman. So, they get to the sun, um, Superman flies out, Green Canary puts them in a uh, force field, which Superman probably shatters. They're able to hold him in place, though, and uh, later, uh, two days later on Earth 2, John Stewart and Guy Gardner arrive. Apparently, uh, two of their uh, two of the other planets that they communicate with, there's been no communications with them. 
guy seems to think it's just, you know, he's on, he doesn't want anything to say. But John wants to investigate. Um, boom tube opens. John and Guy prepare for an assault, but it's Return Heroes and Superman. And turns out that uh, they didn't just uh, cure Clark, they also cured Pa Kent. But uh, Big Bart and Mr. and Scott Free head back to New Genesis. Um, but Damien and Damien tells Alfred that they there was a cure, and, but since. since Alfred killed. Dick, Tim, and I believe it was Dick, Tim, Barbara, and Bruce with a shotgun to the head. Well, no curing them. While, and while Alfred's happy to cure, at the same time, he, well, he's heartbroken that, well, he killed his sons. In space, a, uh, Brainiac, uh, Brainiac drones uh, or probes over, arrive over Earth 7 or Earth 2. Um, the Lanterns and the Supermans deal with them when Brainiac's ship shows up. Looking a little beat up though. And Clark gets feeling something's wrong, though Guy tries to say, eh, maybe, you know, maybe it's a ruse, you know, build more confidence. But uh, Clark he says, no, that's not something that Ray never had to do. It's not his style. Upon arrival, he finds what's left of Brainiac, who, t who simply says that the gods are dead. But still they come. The dead gods will end everything. And that is where the issue ends. Nice start to... Uh, the new deceased. Um, I've, I've honestly been loving. I've loved all of these so far. So yeah, uh, and I get the feeling that uh, I, I can already guess one of the things that occurred in the other uh, the DC the digital first miniseries. But I won't go into that until I've actually read it. Anyway, that is what to do it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off, saying. Live long and rock hard.